Hello, everyone. This is Nutrix the Synth Guy, and today we're looking into the Mini Freak V. Well, it's going to be a quick video about the things that you might not know that the Mini Freak can do on the hardware that it can do, but it's kind of hidden. And the Mini Freak V, it's super obvious. Well, sometimes not. So come with me. I'll show you where to find these hidden gems that you have in the Mini Freak. First of all, the Mini Freak V software now is available as standalone. It used to be available only for those who add the hardware synthesizer. And it also still works that way, meaning when you have the Mini Freak V as a standalone and you connect the Mini Freak hardware, it, it links together. You have this little window. So you said the top you've got linked to Mini Freak. So this is because it's the standalone version I'm, ru I'm running and it's linked to the hardware that I have. If I don't have this, well, of course it won't show up. And it's also the only way you can use to update the firmware, which you have here at the bottom, firmware update. So if you need to go that, you can do this. I don't have to, it's the latest version, but these extended features of managing the hardware is only available in the standalone, not in the plugin that exists within your DAW. Today, we're going to go quickly about hidden features of the Mini Freak that you have here, but if you don't look closely, you won't find them. They're here also, and some of them are not obvious to find. They're kind of hidden again. So let's just go into these. If you want to know more about the engines that runs inside the Mini Freak, I did a video. You should be there or down there, the link to that other video. But I mean, the structure is fairly simple. You've got two oscillators. They go into a filter. The filter goes into three effects and uh, you can play that, you know, and it's a polyphonic synthesizer. I had multiple ways to play it. There's a sequencer in it and let's start right away. If we want to talk about event stuff, let's jump right into the events window. The events window, what you have here, if you have kind of the whole thing that the Mini Free can do, you've got here, you can choose the waves that you want to play with. But when you choose the wave, what you have after here, you've got controls. You, there's options that changes depending on which one you pick. So you see here, you've got a gain because there's audio in. This one here, you got octave for mod quantize. You go, okay, mod quantize, what is that? If you send an LFO to the oscillator one, you're going to be controlling the pitch, but you could say it's going to control the pitch, not in a continuous way. I want it to be an octave or only in a chromatic, only in a fifth. So it becomes kind of a, an arpeggiator in a way because you're going to hit notes right away. So this is really interesting because this is not something we see often. You need to go to some other uh, module in a modular synthesizer to kind of step the LFO so it doesn't go anywhere or everywhere. So in this case, the option here makes it so that the pitch is going to be in tune with whatever choices you make here. And if you go continuous, it's going to be classic, just moving freely to the speed of the LFO. So that's going to be one thing that is interesting. And then when you move them, sometimes you've got another option appearing like here. You've got free run or not, you know. So these options are interesting because they will give you more control over the sound. Okay, so that's one thing. Same thing here, same logic here. And then if you go to the others, you have other controls. Again, you get the mod quantize. So that's one thing. You can detune them separately. It's here. You get this little plus here that appears. The plus basically tells you that you can assign something to this. If you press on plus, it will bring you to the matrix window. And then you have these normal destinations. You know, you've got from pitch one and two, through the pitch of the two at the same time, oscillator one wave, oscillator two, one timber, cutoff, and all these things. And then you have more. These are none right now, you know. And you see, if you go over them, you see that they don't change color. But if you go here, this one is blue. It means it's assigned to the oscillator one type here, this thing here. So if you assign, let's say, an LFO to this thing, it's actually going to change the oscillator type. Look, another one. So that's it. If you, if you see these now, they have nothing assigned to them. If you press on plus for the sub here, it's actually going to assign now the oscillator one shape, which is the value. It's the third controller of the orange one here, the shape here, this one. So you're actually assigning the matrix right here. So if you want to control that, you say, well, the sub is going to 
this is the sub here, I want to assign to LFO1. So that's one that you see, and you see the movement right away. So that's it. Very simple, very quick and easy to do. Now, these hidden controls, you have them at different places. You don't have it in the filter because the filter is on the original hardware, it's an analog filter. In this case, it's not analog, it's a virtual analog, but it's then you don't have more control, it's the same thing. But here, in the effects, you see you can, of course, t select them the way you want. You can turn them off if you don't want them, okay? And there's a, here you see the big crusher, you click on it, you've got options. So, okay, I want to have a distortion. And then under it, you've got classic, you're the presets. You can click here and say, oh, there's classic soft clip, germanium, dual fold, climb, and tape. So these are the different type of distortion you have in it. So for each of them, maybe not each of them, but most of them, you've got a choices like reverb. You can have them long, hall, echoes, room, and dark. So there's presets you can change. But then there's something interesting. For reverb, you've got insert or send. So if it's send, if you go same thing here, let's say you select delay, actually delay is gonna be picked on last one. Last one is on send for the, the, the delay. And again, you've got different type of delay, ping pong, sync or not sync, mono, mono sync, filter, filter sync, filtered ping pong sync, I mean, a huge amount here. So you don't know how powerful the effect here is, it is just, mind-boggling the options you have here. It's really cool. Now, the concept of insert or effect is that if you want to plug them out like they would be effect pedals, like one going through the other, then you would say, well, the first one I want to be in insert, and then it goes into the chorus, and the output of the chorus goes into as insert into the delay. So the result is one sound that has been reverbed, chorused, and delayed one after the other, and the result has been passed through the next one. If you put it in send, they're going to be in parallel. So I'm going to F1, put it in send. So what you have now is F1 in parallel to F2 and F3. They're all parallel. Then you have these other functions here, like in the scale window. You can actually click this, the notes and decide what note you want to use in the scale. So you can actually make your own if you want to. And the voice, again, you get controls here to decide mono, unison polyphonic or um, paraphonic. And then if you're in paraphonic mode, second oscillator is the same as the first one. So it, dis it disappears in a way. But what you have here, it's interesting. You've got this little tool and then you click on it. You say, okay, it's in paraphonic. Then paraphonic, you're gonna decide how much, the, the type of gliding mode you're gonna use, the allocation um, of the poly notes. So how are you gonna, you're gonna play two notes. So how are they gonna assign it? And the note steal. Which note is going to stay? Which note is going to dis disappear when you play more than the amount of notes you can play? If you change this to, let's say, monophonic, again, some choices here to control this. If you change it to polyphonic, again, you get controls here. So depending on what you're choosing, like the unison, you've got the unison mode, how many unison uh, voices you want to play, and the spread, how much you want them to separate from one to the other, You know how far you want them to detune so all of this is really powerful and in the mini freak it kind of go into little menus which is not a big deal but sometimes people don't dive and they don't see it in the v version you see it right away same logic with the lfo you see different options here of uh, of ways that the lfo can work and you're on a free running you want it to be polyphonic uh re-triggering you want so this different ways to to start so in, in this case in the virtual version it's easy to see right away you see it in the hardware it's always there but you need to decide how to do it kind of a, and there's this thing here which is free or all so you want it to be triplet dotted free running or all so the a whole note so it's um it's a tempo sync if you want basically one thing that is interesting also is the wave if you go to the maximum here the last one is shaper Shaper is a wave that you can draw, you can make your own. It doesn't have to be an LFO, uh, always one cycle. So then you go to the LFO shaper that you have at the bottom here, and you can just draw the way you want. And then you can click here and say, well, I want to erase that one, and I want it to be like this. I want to erase that one, I'm going to be like that. Like this one, I'm going to erase. You need to erase first and read, oh, enter the value I want to have. And, uh, okay, like this. And this is going to be like that. Erase first and put it like that. You know, so you can just draw 
new shapes and make it into a weird shaped LFO. And you can also change the length of it, you know, uh, here with the steps, how many steps you want to use. So very complex, very powerful. And you get how much you want that movement to work. And it's the, it's, it's, you've got two. So the LFO one and two can have this. So again, this is available and it's, it's really graphic. You have this also on the, on the hardware. It's, it's, Fairly easy to do the same thing. Same logic with the envelopes. You have this little option of the tool you can click. You've got options here. Is it polyphonic key, monophonic key? How you want this to be re-triggered for the envelope here. Uh, same thing here. You want the envelope to be reset or in continue mode. And the way the velocity is going to affect the VCA, the VCF, uh, the envelope, the time, all of this is also available in the hardware, but it's not as obvious because you actually have to go inside little menus. But it's there. It's, it's, everything's there. So all of these little things are just, I would say, cool things that you can just use to get more out of it. And same thing here, if you want to control the pitch and the mod, you can say you want to have vibrato, the speed of it, the pitch band range you want to have. Uh, macros, if you're in macro, I'm going to close this. Uh, you're basically going to click here and you're going to assign the macro, uh, yeah, the macro number one to a destination part of the modulation matrix. So all of these others here are assigned to none. So if you click on something like hold, you click on it and it becomes assigned to none. Then you say where I want it to be controlled, like wheel or something like that, or velocity and aftertouch. And then you see here you can still assign just velocity, just aftertouch, and velocity and aftertouch. Same thing on the hardware. We're in aftertouch now. Just want to take a little moment and talk about something. I had a question today about somebody says, well, if I have a microfreak, which is a polyphonic key uh, controller, keyboard controller, because it's different in the way it's done. So each key has a pressure that is separate from the other one. If I use that and control the mini freak, would it work? I didn't try it, but my guess it's no, because when you look at this, they only talk about aftertouch. And aftertouch is the channel aftertouch. Here you've got a channel aftertouch. So there's no reason for it to work. I didn't try it. I'll have to try it. It doesn't work. It doesn't work because you cannot even assign it. You cannot even say to the micro freak that you want the polyphonic key pressure to be assigned to a destination because it doesn't recognize it coming in. So it doesn't support it. So that's it. Micro freak V. If you want the sound of the micro freak without having the hardware, that's your option. Stay safe, make more music, and see you soon. Cheers.